be late. So today's lecture, um, and we are going to be chatting about um, income tax, right? So income tax, yes, I know most of you are going to, the first question you're going to say is how much of this is coming up in the test? So from leases, um, it's not, nothing from leases is coming out and nothing from income tax is coming out. However, the issue that we have with income tax is that income tax, students sometimes struggle with income tax. And what I find is it's generally the students that are not studying tax that struggle. I don't know why, but um, that's just, you know, you know, like tax is a separate subject, right? So, so people that are not studying that, they struggle. Um, they struggle a little bit. Gary, I'll answer your question at the end of the lecture. Um, so, so they struggle a little bit with, with income tax, okay? Now, so, so, so basically the reason why I'm telling you this is I want you to pay careful attention to, to what we're doing in order for you not to have any gaps in your knowledge if you are someone that's not studying tax. It's now super important that you pay attention to, to what's going on here. Um, so the first thing um, are your sources. So firstly, you're going to be spending a lot of time in chapter five of your gripping graph book. And then all of the questions, all of the questions, we're doing all of the questions in chapter five of the graded questions. There are no exclusions, right? So there's no sections that I'm going to ask you to leave out. There are no sections that you can skip over and not read. Everything in chapter five is required. And, and um, yeah, so and, and, every, and every question uh, in the graded question book is um, something that I expect that you do, right? Um, and obviously, if you want to pass and get a good mark, you will do all of them multiple times and go through and mark your mark your um, your attempts and that sort of stuff, right? So, <clears throat> so graded questions, chapter five, um, the whole chapter. And I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit about part A because listen, we're going to get questions about part A. Um, and and um, because part A is self study. Part B is what we're going to spend a lot of our time on, which is income tax. Right. Um, and then the other thing, the other source basically that I haven't put on this slide is the slides itself. Right. So there's going to be stuff that I'm going to be including in the slides that I didn't pick out of any book, right? It's just stuff that the way I understood it and the way, and it's important for us to have some background knowledge maybe, um, then I've included it in the slide. So I want you to, in consultation with the textbook, you need to also have the slides uh, there, uh, right? And so obviously the slides are on ClickUp and they've been on ClickUp, I think from uh, sometime last week or so. Um, and so, it's important that you that you download the slides and go through it together with with the textbook. Now, what exactly is our plan? What are we what are we wanting to do here? Right. So the first thing is um, we're going to be starting off in today's discussion. A lot of our discussion is going to be about what is accounting profit, right? And what are taxable what's taxable profit. Right? So, so I'm going to introduce this idea of taxable profit. And so, uh, so, so guys, uh, in first year, right, you would have seen at a lot of the times with with um, your your papers, the 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 examiner would say, assume that uh, accounting profit is equal to taxable profit, or assume that accounting profit is equal to taxable income. Right. So you never knew what that meant. You you didn't understand that. Today, you're going to understand why that statement was there, right? So taxable profit and taxable um, and accounting profit are two very different things, right? And we're going to discuss that today. Okay, so then the next thing is um, after we create this uh, tax income, uh, I mean, sorry, income tax expense, after we create this income tax expense, we need to pay it over to SARS. Right? We need to pay SARS. Uh, SARS is the South African Revenue Service. For those of us that don't know, that is the governmental body that collects um, our tax. Okay, so we need to pay SARS, and because we we've got this transactional relationship with SARS, we're going to have something like a, a tax liability or a SARS payable. Basically, we're going to create this creditor called SARS payable. Right, and so 
when we create this creditor called SARS payable, we have to start managing that like a creditor. Okay, and so that's what we're going to talk a little bit about in objective two, right? How do we manage SARS as a as a creditor? Because it's not a normal creditor. It, there's some specific things about it. Um, then the other thing that that's important and, and that we have to learn very quickly is that with SARS, right, the authority that tells us what the tax is, is SARS. We can't go to SARS and say, oh, SARS, you know, I calculated this amount and I think this is going to be my tax. So that's not how SARS works. SARS is, is like a, the dictator. SARS tells you what tax you will pay. Right? You can't tell SARS, oh, but I don't agree with this calculation or, or something like that, right? SARS will tell you. So because of that, when we are in account, when we in, in accounting are calculating income tax, we always creating an estimate. So technically, we never knowing exactly the amount that we're going to pay. It's always an estimate. And because of, of that relationship where SARS will tell us how what we need to pay them, um, and we try and estimate the amount, um, because because remember SARS is always working late, right? So for example, this year we will submit the 2022 um, uh, tax uh, return, right? And that and that ends in February. So the last date is February 2022, right? Um, so from March onwards, we've actually been in the 2023 tax year, right? But yet we'll only submit this tax return in November and SARS will only get, get back to us uh, late November or December. So, so SARS is very much behind, like they're very delayed. So we need to estimate the tax now, right? And then SARS will get back to us and tell us what the real tax is about six or seven months later. So, so because of that relationship, we can have a situation where we don't estimate it as efficiently or as correct. And therefore we might overestimate it or underestimate it. And that's what we're talking about here when I say over provision, oops, we need a different color. That's what we're talking about here when we say over provision and under provision. It's basically overestimation or underestimation of tax, okay? Um, then we're gonna discuss very briefly deferred tax. We're not gonna go into depth. So remember in your textbooks, you're gonna see chapter six is a deferred tax, right? Chapter six is deferred tax in your textbook. We are not doing chapter six. We're not covering chapter six at all. So the only things that you need to know about deferred tax is going to be found in the slide, in these slides. They're not, they're not, you're not gonna um, need to know anything more than what I tell you uh, in the slides. Um, and then, and then um, I'll just show you briefly what to do with the movement of deferred tax because it does affect what we're gonna be doing now. Now deferred tax is a special type of tax, right? It's a special type of income tax that the accountants account for. And um, that's basically all you need to know for this year. And next year, you're going to be doing chapter six in more detail, uh, if you do back 300. Um, anyway, so then, um, and then the last part, which is really the very important part, and this happens somewhere in lecture seven and um, six and seven, um, is disclosure, right? So this is what we're aiming for. Remember when we did revenue, I told you guys, uh, disclosure and revenue, not super important, right? Not super important, disclosure and revenue. And that's why you remember the main thing that we test and the main thing that you see often coming up in revenue are the journal entries or calculations or something like that, because it wasn't important, right? This uh, section here, income tax, is totally different. Disclosure is super important, right? Super, super important. So we have to get that disclosure down. We have to, we have to understand where the numbers go and, 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 and what numbers need to be the same, right? Because, and I'll explain why that's important um, later. Okay, so this question, I know I'm going to get multiple times. Part A, which runs from page 221 to 229, right? Part A is self-study. That means you're gonna study it on your own. It's nine pages, right? It's not, um, I'm not killing you, right? It's nine pages. You need to read, I, I reckon, so I read it last night again, just to prepare for this lecture. It took me like half an hour. So if it's taking you longer than like 45 minutes, then you, you're doing something wrong, 
All right, so, so just um, I need you to read through it and understand it specifically before you do the online homework, right? And we'll chat about when the online homework is going to be. But this, specifically before you do the online homework, you need to read through it because it might come up in the online homework. For test three, it's less important, right? It, the part A is going to be less important because I'm mainly going to be testing part B in test three, okay? So, so, so um, that's important, right? So, so let me just give you a brief. So, what Part A does is Part A takes a world tour, basically, of the different taxes, right? Part A takes a world tour of the different taxes. So they, so they sort of start off talking about income tax, and this is what Part B is all about. So, Part B is all about income tax. Income tax is basically a tax on companies, right? So, it's a tax that's levied basically on companies, right? Um, and then income tax is, it includes something called capital gains. Important, capital gains tax is not a separate tax. It is a tax that's included inside income tax, okay? So it's not a separate tax. Remember that we're not taxing them twice. It's, it's, it's a tax that's included inside income tax. Um, and then we have the system of payment for companies, right? The system of payment is called provisional tax payment, right? Or provisional tax payment system. So the way the, pay, what SARS does is SARS says, I want to have a continual inflow of cash, okay? I want to make sure that money is continually coming into the, to, to SARS. So they make you pay a little bit of tax um, at times during the year. So halfway through the year, you're going to pay 50%. The next um, uh, six months, you're going to, or the last six months, you're going to pay another 50% or so. So that's uh, the method of payment is called the provisional tax payment system. Um, and then obviously the tax rate for companies um, is 28% currently. And it's been around about 28% since um, democracy. Okay, so since 1994, it's been around about 28%. It hasn't really changed. And I don't think it'll change anytime soon or you never know, but for the foreseeable future, it won't it won't change. Okay, so now that's income tax, right? So so we've done basically income tax. Now let's talk a little bit about um, I'm just putting a little tick there. So let's talk a bit about employee tax. So employee tax is basically the tax that is taken out from the employee that works at a company, right? So what the companies do is the companies help tax helps helps us out by withholding some of your salary, right? So you go, you get a job, the, your company will, will withhold some of your salary, mean, mean hold it back from you, they won't pay it to you, and then they'll pay it to SARS. Yes, it's called P-A-Y-E, or, or pay as you earn, pay as you earn, P-A-Y-E tax. Um, and basically, what, what I'm trying to show you here in these, in these journal entries is that we, when we are, have tax, uh, when we have a salaries expense, we then will have a creditor for salary, like we need to pay the, the employee, so we can have like employees as creditors as well. So we'll have salaries payable, right? And then we have another credit for PAYE tax, which means that we're actually reducing the person's salary by the tax amount. Now, some of most of you, um, I assume, haven't had a, a permanent job where you get paid a salary. Some of you would, but but most of you haven't. But you, what you will see on your pay slip is you will see that um, your salary comes in. It's called gross salary, and then there's this tax amount, and then you have a net salary, the salary that you actually get in your bank account. And so this is what. Uh, employee taxes. It's a withholding tax that your employer holds back from you um, in order for you for, 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 so that they pay it over to SARS. It also helps SARS because SARS then gets money from you every month, right? And why, why is that good? Because um, SARS knows that if they go to South Africans and say, okay, pay all of your tax uh, in one month, South Africans are very bad at planning, and they will not have the tax ready for SARS. So in order to avoid a situation where SARS doesn't get paid, they would rather keep a little bit of your money back every month um, than asking you to pay all of it in one lump sum, right? Um, and it also helps with, with SARS. Uh, it helps SARS with cash flow so that SARS is getting cash more regularly through, through its system. 
the next uh, type of tax that we want to talk about is VAT. And so VAT is a value added tax. It's, it's a tax that's very controversial because the only person that's paying VAT, now listen carefully now, this is, might come to us as a surprise to some. The only person that's paying VAT in South Africa is you. Right? There is no company that's paying VAT. There is no government agency that's paying VAT. There is no NGO that's paying VAT. The only person paying VAT is you. Right? Why am I saying that? Because what happens is, when just say I'm a company, right? So I go and buy um, um, some raw materials, okay? And they will charge VAT on my raw materials, right? But then I, I use that raw materials and I make some product, right? And then I sell, I sell my product, okay? And when I sell my product, I also charge my customer VAT, okay? And then I net the VAT that I paid off, right, um, against the VAT that I received. So I, there's a situation where I'm not paying any VAT. The company is not paying any VAT. Because I get my VAT back. You see what I'm saying? So the only person that's paying VAT is the final consumer, you. So you come to me and let's say I'm making food. You buy the food from me. I charge you VAT on it, right? And then you eat the food and you can't claim the VAT from anyone. You can't claim your VAT from me. It's done. You're the only person paying it. Okay. So VAT is that. It's, it's a tax on the final consumer. It's a tax on you only, on humans only. Um, and, and so there's different types of VAT, and, we, and we're and we not going to go into details, but there's some VAT that's actually zero, right? So, for example, brown bread and stuff like that. And then there's some VAT, some uh, things that we don't charge VAT on, okay? So, 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 um, so, so that's VAT, right? Um, now, you guys are going to go, and when you read through... When you read through these pages here, page 221 to 229, you're going to see they're going to talk about input VAT and output VAT. And all of that stuff is important. And I know that you guys have done it before, um, especially if you've done high school uh, accounting. So you've done this before. Uh, like I said, it, it will be important for the online homework, but not super important for the, for the test. Okay. Um, anyway, let's talk about this next tax. So the next tax is called dividend tax. A dividend tax. Dividend tax, fairly a new tax. It, it came out in 2012, so it's, so it's fairly new in terms of uh, other taxes. And it's a tax that we, is, is designed to target those rich people, those, that 1%, the 1% that's owning all the, all the wealth in South Africa. That's what this tax is trying to target. It's trying to target the rich man. And so how do, how do they do it? They say, okay, if you own shares in a company, you are likely to be quite wealthy, right? Yeah. So we're going to charge you 20% on the dividends that you receive from that company. So whatever you receive, whether it's uh, cash, and sometimes you can even pay dividends in, in, in assets like shares and all of that stuff, they will take, the government will take 20% or SARS will take at least 20% of the value of that dividend, right? As a tax. Okay. Now this has an implication on income tax, the one that we are worried about, right? The one that we're going to be discussing for the next couple of weeks, the one that we're going to be discussing income tax. Dividends tax actually affects income tax in some way. Let me explain how. So you guys know that, for example, if, you, if a company owns shares in another company, they will get dividend income, okay? They will get, receive dividends from that company. So when they receive that dividends, it's going to be taxed, okay? And, they, and they're going to give away 20%. Now, that 20% is going, um, uh, so, so that 20% is going to SARS, and the 80% that's left, we will record in our uh, profit and loss statement, okay? But now, when we're calculating income tax, we can't tax ourselves again. We just taxed ourselves on the dividend. So you'll find that uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to remove dividend income from accounting profit. We're going to remove dividend income from our profit because it's already being taxed by dividends tax. Okay, So that's going to become a, a, a type of income that we cannot tax. 
okay and this we're going to call it a, sp a special word just now so so that's going to become a ta uh, income that we cannot tax so dividend income affects our our income tax and that's because it's already been taxed yes it's it's a it's a um, yeah, so it's a tax on shareholders and similar to, to employee tax, right? So you remember with the employee tax, the person pays you a, a net amount, an amount less the tax. Similar to employee tax, dividends tax is also a withholding tax. When I say withholding tax, it means the person that's paying the amount must withhold it. So the company that's paying out the dividends withholds that, that 20% and then pays it over to SARS. Okay, so the, so those so that is dividends tax. Um, it's a tax on on shareholders. Okay, but just remember, I just want you to keep in uh, and just remember dividends tax because it's going to become important when I start to tell you. I say, oh, you must take out dividend income because it's already been taxed somewhere else. Okay, so just just keep that in mind. Just remember that. Now there are sort of other taxes, and you're going to see your textbook will will talk to you about other other taxes. There are taxes like um, rates. So rates, when you buy a property, you have electricity, you have water, you have refuse removal, which is like um, like your bun, right? And then you also have a sewerage where they, they take the, the sewer water away um, and, and rain water and that. But then they also charge you an additional thing on your bill and it's called rates, right? Property rates. And property rates, for example, is... Um, it's, it's just basically for you live it's a cost that you need to pay because you live in the country right and so um anyone that owns property needs to pay these property rates it's because you live in the country so the government charges you for for that basically um and then for example if you die there's a thing um uh, called estate duty estate duty meaning your estate that you've left the the money that you've left behind after you died they will they will want to tax that right so that's another type of tax if you uh, import something when i say import means um, you're bringing something from or buying something in another country and you're bringing it to south africa right so if you import something the government will charge you for that because the government will say hey by you buying foreign goods you are actually taking away South African jobs because um, when you buy those foreign goods, your money is going to pay someone else's salary who, who doesn't live in South Africa. So because of that, we're going to charge you uh, uh, what's called import duty or exercise, exercise duty. Um, and, and that's because um, you are buying something from outside our country. Um, <laughs> So, so those are the different types of, of taxes. Um, what happens if you don't pay rates? You do pay rates. Um, somewhere along the line, you will pay rates. So for example, let's say you're renting, right? Your landlord will pay the rates. Or let's say you're living in an in a, in a area um, of South Africa where rates is very low. Now, now I own property in, in, in Durban. And so uh, there, there's a, there's a, there's a neighborhood in Durban called Amlazi, where they don't charge a lot of rates. They charge very few, uh, the rates is much less than where I live. And then the government, what they do is they will increase the rates for those rich people that live in the rich areas. And they decrease the rates for the people that live in the poor areas. And But in that sense, someone is paying the rates, right? <laughs> the government is never going to lose out. Um, someone is paying the rates somewhere along the line. So, so for example, in where I come from, like in Amshlanga, we pay um, a much higher, about 20 or 30 percent higher than the people down in in uh, Kmash. Those of you from Durban, you'll know what Kmash is, Kwamashu, right? So they pay a, a much lower rate than than what we pay, and so and so someone is paying the rates. It's it might not always be the the person that's staying in the property, but someone is paying the rates. Okay, anyway, that's beside the point. So that's part A. So, I've, so we've, done, we've done the last type of tax. That's part A of your textbook, right? So that's gonna be self-study. I'm not going in depth into that, right? The stuff that we want to spend a lot of time on and go in depth on is going to be, is going to be um, income tax, right? So that's where we're gonna spend a lot of our time. Now, the first thing I want to tell you is 
um, I'm just going from a very broad standpoint, you guys in second year, uh, sorry, in first year, you would have seen that you, you take a profit before tax, you multiply it by the tax rate and you get profit for the year, right? Everybody knows you, you've done that before, I'm assuming, right? You take profit before tax, multiplied it, got like, now that is a big lie. <laughs> like, now I feel like Morpheus, you know, Morpheus in, in um, the matrix, right? Now I'm giving you the red pull, okay? What you've been taught is a big lie, okay? We're not, that's not how you calculate tax. You don't take the profit before tax multiplied by the tax. You must never do that. That's very wrong. Okay. You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> yes. It's a big scam. <laughs> so, so you, 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 you can't do that. Um, because it's totally, that's a very basic way of doing accounting. Now I'm going to teach you how to do it the correct way, the proper way. The true way, okay. So we must never ever do that. So, so from today, from today onwards, you must never, never, never take profit before tax multiplied by the tax rate because it's very wrong. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So, so, so the so the first thing that I want to talk about is there's three places you can see tax. Right? There's three place, places you can see tax. The first place is on the income statement. Right? So profit and loss. And tax that you find on the profit and loss statement is related to those items that made up profit and loss. So it's related to the revenue and the expenses uh, that made up uh, profit for the year. That's what that uh, income tax expense relates to. Okay, So you're going to see that on your profit and loss statement, there's going to be one line item. So one line that says income tax expense, and you're going to have an amount, okay? That is only for the profit and loss section of your income statement, right? But you know that your income statement has another section. What's the other section called? O-C-I. Okay, so the, the, the top part of your income statement, profit and loss, you've got one line item, okay? That's called? income tax expense, one line item for the whole of the top part of your income statement. Now the bottom part, the OCI part, you're going to have a separate line item for each element in OCI. Okay, so let's say you've got a revaluation surplus. I want to see revaluation surplus less tax on revaluation surplus, and then you, I want to see an amount. And then later on you got, um, uh, let's say another type of OCI, the only thing that comes to mind now is, is something called an actual gain or loss, which you guys are not going to study. But anyway, actual gain or loss. Then I want to say I want you to, I want to see just below that less tax on actual gain or loss. So under OCI, you're going to have a separate tax element for each part of OCI. Okay, we want to see it separately. Why? The answer, the reason, the question is why do we want to see it separately? And that's because different parts of OCI are taxed differently. And therefore, we can't just have one line item for OCI because it will be too confusing for us to understand, okay, so how did you come to this amount? Like, so, so as a result, we have to have each element of OCI or each item of OCI and then the tax element of that item. Okay, and that's how we're gonna, that's how we're gonna set out our OCI. Okay, so that's the second place you can see tax. So the first place is profit and loss. The next place is OCI. And the last place, which you're not going to deal with this year, is going to be your changes in equity statement, right? So you guys know that that there's a, a state, statement called changes in, in equity. Um, and, and that sometimes when you have changes in equity that result in tax, you can also show your tax on that statement, right? But for now, I don't want you to worry about it too much now. Um, yeah, for example, you might show dividends tax there. You're right, Balisa, yeah. So, um, so that is, that is um, 
the three places that we want to see tax, right? Uh, the important part that we have to talk about now is what tax is levied against companies, right? So we've already spoken about that is not, it actually doesn't affect the company, right? Because we have, bring it in, we take it out, uh, there's a net a zero effect on, on, on me, the company, right? So, so that is not important. Employee tax is not important also because that's a tax on the employees. And dividends tax is also a tax on the shareholders. So even though I might show it somewhere, it's not a tax on me. So when I'm talking about income tax, I'm excluding all these other taxes. And I'm only talking about the 28%, right? So that's the only tax that we're talking about now uh, for the rest of this uh, lecture, for the rest of this learning area. Right? It's, it's only that 28%, okay? Now, I just wanna quickly tell you about the elements of income tax. So income tax is going to be calculated as follows. You're going to come up with this amount called taxable profits, okay? Notice not accounting profits, right? Not a profits that, that was as a result of your of what you find on your income statement, it's gonna be a totally different number, right? Remember I said what you've been told was a lie. <laughs> so it's it's not it's not accounting profit, it's taxable profits, and this is what I'm where I am here. So I'm saying taxable profits multiplied by the tax rate. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you about how to create taxable profits and then how to create or how to find the tax rate. Okay, we're going to talk about both of those things during these upcoming lectures. Now, the important principle, now this you have to understand, you have to remember. The important principle, guys, is that we want to try and estimate, right, the amount of tax that we are going to pay to SARS in a given period. Right? That is our goal. That is what we're looking for. Right. And so throughout this entire journey, we want to make sure that we're getting closer to an accurate estimate of tax. Right? We, want, we want to continually try and force ourselves to get closer to an accurate estimate of tax. Okay, so that's our principle. That's the thing I want you to keep in mind always, right? And if you write that down, um, then, and you keep returning to that, you're gonna see how everything that we discuss links back to this principle of how do I get my estimate right? How do I, what do I need to change to get my amount right, right? And so that's that's the important bit. Um, now, you would have noticed that um, income tax has two variables, okay? The first variable is taxable profit. Uh, Okay, that's the first variable, variable one, taxable profit. And the next one is the tax rate. Now let's just briefly talk about taxable profit, right? And I want to focus in on, so far we were only taught about accounting profit, how to create the, the profit that you see on the income statement, right? And, and you, most of you have done that, right? Before you, you come up with profit for the income statement. But now I want to talk about how is this different? How is taxable profit different? Now. Again, what I said is if you, if a student now takes accounting profit and applies the tax rate, then I know that they haven't attend, attended any of my lectures and they're totally lost, right? And if that happens, um, there will be a penalty. So you must never, never, never take accounting profit and multiply it by the tax rate. Never again, right? It's never going to happen again because now you know. Now you've taken the red pill and, and you are Neo and now you've taken the red pill and now you know. It's not, you must never do that. Okay, why? Because one, accounting profit is a profit that we have created by using what? By using accounting standards. Okay, now this is important guys and I need you to answer in the chat. What basis do we use when we create um, uh, accounting profit. There's, there, there's it. It's already sharp. Guys are sharp, man. I didn't even, I didn't even finish the sentence, and you guys got the right answer. Right. So the, you guys would have learned we use the accrual basis of preparation to prepare financial statements. The accrual basis of preparation. Now, now, what does that mean? What, what, what are you saying? Accrual basis means I need to record everything that's happened in this year 
in my financial statements. Okay? That's what it says. So for example, if I incurred an expense this year, but I never paid it, right? The money hasn't left my bank account. I still need to report it, right? Because it happened this year, right? Uh, in the inverse, right? The, the flip side of that is, if I paid someone, right? Uh, for uh, for an expense that's only happening next year, so I, uh, that's called a prepayment, right? So I paid someone for an expense that's only happening next year. I cannot recognize that expense this year. I can't put it into accounting profit because I can't recognize it as an expense this year because I must only recognize that as an asset, right? Called uh, and we call that prepaid expenses, right? We recognize that as an asset, and when we incur it. Right, in the next financial period is when I can recognize it as an expense. Does that make sense to everyone? Everyone on track, everyone knows what I'm talking about when I talk about the accrual system. Right. So that is how we prepare accounting profit. Okay. When we prepare accounting profit like that, we'll then put an amount on our income statement, right? Profit before tax. We call it profit before tax. That is accounting profit. Okay, profit before tax is accounting profit, right? So that's where we'll find profit before tax. Okay, so now let's park that idea of accounting profit. And now let's talk about taxable profit. Taxable profit is a profit amount that we arrived at by applying the tax act. Notice with accounting profit, we applied the accounting standards or what we call IFRS, right? Uh, we applied IFRS to arrive at accounting profit, but for taxable profit, we apply the Tax Act. You see, totally different now, uh, a basis of preparation. And you also got to remember that uh, SARS is a schizophrenic, right? Everybody knows what's a schizophrenic. He has split personality, right? The tax man has a split personality because he doesn't use the accrual basis, right? Um, he uses what we call a hybrid. Right? So he uses the accrual basis when it benefits him, and then when it benefits him, he wants to use this other thing called the cash basis. Right? So he uses whatever is best for him. The tax man is a schizophrenic. Okay. So he will use part of his thing will be the accrual, part of it will be uh, cash basis, and he switches between the two. And so when we're preparing tax, taxable profit, we have to now switch between, uh, or, 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 or we have to become like the, the tax man and become a bit schizophrenic and switch between the two, right? Um, we, we, have to, we have to become, yeah, so he is very selective. The word is select, he's selective about what he wants to use. <laughs> um, and what you will find is with taxable profit, we don't place it anywhere on the main statements. Instead, there's going to be a little bit of a calculation in the notes, right? And remember, I said disclosure is going to be important. So, so this note is going to be very important for us. There's going to be a little bit of a disclosure in the notes where we tell the users of financial statements, this is the accounting profit that you guys are seeing on your income statement, and this is how it relates to taxable profit. Okay, so that that difference is important, right? So I want you to pay attention to that to that um, difference. Um, okay, then the the other thing is um, what you will find is sometimes we tax things or we tax income that is not uh, included in in tax in our accounting pro profit, and sometimes we are not allowed to deduct expenses that is. So we're gonna have these differences. And the differences between the, the um, accounting profit and taxable profit are in two broad categories. We have, um, someone's asked, would the accrual basis apply to months between November and Feb? Uh, so, so the tax year runs from um, 1st March to 28th February, but you only pay the tax and you only know how much tax you're actually supposed to pay in November. So, yeah, I don't really understand the question. But anyway, um, okay, so let's talk again about the differences. So the differences between a taxable profit and accounting profit, there's two big categories. The one is 
permanent differences, right? So differences that will never disappear. And the other one is temporary differences or differences that will disappear over time. So let's talk about the first type of difference. Now we spoke already about uh, dividends tax. So if I tell you that we must remove the dividends income, right? Because it's already been taxed, right? That is something that we never going to, the, you and the tax man are never going to see eye to eye with that. He's always going to remove it and you're always going to, as the accountant, you're always going to want to include dividend income. So that is, for example, a difference that will never disappear. It will always be there, right? But on the temporary different side, we can have a, 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 a let's say we bought, uh, we buy a machinery and I decide, okay, I think I'm going to get 10 years useful life out of this machine. And the tax man says, oh, no, 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 I think you're only going to get three years. So can you see that we go both going to depreciate the full amount of the machine, right? But we're just going to do it over different time frames. I'm going to do it over 10 years. He's going to do it over three years or however many I said, I can't remember. But, but we're both going to do it over different amounts of time. But at the end of 10 years, we would have both depreciated the whole machine, right? That's a temporary difference, meaning that over time, it disappears, okay? Over time, it works itself out, okay? So those are the two types of differences. Now, so far, we've only been speaking about taxable profits. Now, I just want to switch to the other element called the tax rate. Okay, so with the tax rate, uh, it is very easy. You'll be given the tax rate in the question, right? But in the very rare situation that you are required to prepare a income statement or a, a, a tax, uh, income tax expense at a time when we're changing the rate, right? you might need to consider whether or not to use a new rate, the new rate that's coming in. There's two criteria that have to be met. The first is that the rate has to be substantively enacted. And the next is the effective date needs to be before your year end, right? On or before your year end, the effective date. So how do we know if something is substantively enacted? The first thing is if it's just a change in the rate, then as long as the finance minister announces it in the budget speech, it's changed, right? So there's no argument, it's changed. Um, however, with the if it's a new law, let's say like the dividends tax law, the president has to sign the, the new act, okay? And only once the president signs the new act is it substantively enacted. So you need to look at your question and analyze, is this happening or not? The effective date is easy because you'll be given a date and we'll say, okay, this is the effective date. And then you just need to look at it and say, okay, is it before or after my reporting date? If it's after, then I won't take it into account. If it's before, then I will take it into account. Okay. Now, this is not super important for test three, but it is important for your online homework. Okay. So just keep that in mind. The slide, the slide is important for online homework. Okay, so let's put what we discussed together, right? So, so far we've been discussing, let's put it all together. Let's have a look at what we found. Okay, so I said first, accounting profit is what we've been working on, what we've been doing for all these years in accounting, okay? That's what accounting profit is. Then we have these things called permanent differences and they can go in both directions, right? We can add them and subtract them. Um, for example, we would, uh, we would uh, might add or subtract non-deductible expenses, we might add or subtract um, exempt income, etc. So we'd add or sub uh, subtract them and there will be permanent differences, they're not going to disappear, right? Um, and then we'll have temporary differences. These are differences that disappear over a, 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 a period of time, right? They disappear over time. And then once we do those two things to the accounting profit, we come up with taxable profit. Okay, we then take the taxable profit, we multiply it by the rate to get tax expense. Okay, now this expense here that we come up with after all of this work is the thing that you have been seeing in your income statement. You know where, 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 where you say profit before tax, then you say income tax expense. That's this amount. So this is why I was telling you what you've been doing by taking the accounting profit and multiplying it by the tax rate is totally wrong. We have to do all of the stuff here before you can come to that amount. Okay, now uh, guys, I'm just gonna take a minute now and I want to ask you, if you had dividends received, right? So if you received dividends from your subsidiary, 
would you include it or exclude it in in um, accounting profit? Type out in the chat, would you include or exclude that amount in accounting profit, dividends income? Right, there we go. So you're going to include it into your accounting profit, right? Dividends income is included in accounting profit. Now, if I wanted to make a change, okay, if I wanted to make a change to accounting profit, right, so that I get to taxable profit, what would I do with that dividends income? Would I add it or subtract it from accounting profit? Right, now this is important. Dividends income is subtracted. You get what I'm saying? So it's an income, but you're subtracting it. And th that idea confuses a lot of students. It's dividends income, but now I'm subtracting it from accounting profit to get to taxable profit. Okay, that, that, because uh, people don't realize it's already been included. So now I must remove it by subtracting it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's important. I, I see that a lot of you guys are quite sharp because you picked up on that very quickly. Okay, now I just want to take a few seconds and talk about the way the, the tax man does his job, right? So the first thing is with the tax man, he, he has this formula. So he has a very different formula to the one that we're going to use, right? So we start with accounting profit. He starts with this thing called gross income. Right, and then he adds, uh, he, he removes any exempt income, he removes any deductions, which are basically expenses, right? Uh, his word for expenses are deductions. And then he, he adds this thing called a uh, capital gains tax, okay? And we're gonna speak about that now. Um, so if we look at, if we look at uh, his, this is how he comes up with gross income, right? So he says, if the amount is received by the entity, right? And notice what he says here. If it's received or accrued by the entity, right? So not just accrued. It needs to be received or accrued. It can be either or, right? And this is what I was talking about where he's, I say he's a bit schizophrenic. He says the at the earlier date of whether it's received or accrued, it must be included in your taxable profit, okay? So at the earlier date of whether it's received or accrued, right? So let's do one example. And we'll come back to that definition again. So we say company A received 10,000 Rand in rental on the 31st of December 2001, right, which is the current year. Um, but the rental related to January 2002. So he received it in advance, right? So from the accounting perspective, what we would do is we would say, listen, I've received income in advance. I'm going to create a liability. And I'm going to call that uh, that liability rental received in advance or, or rental income received in advance. I'm going to create that liability and I'm going to keep it until such time that I actually earned this income. And then when I earn it, I'll move it into income. You see, that's what the accountant will do. But what does the tax man do? How much do you think he recognizes in 2001? He recognizes, type it out in the chat. If he's looking at the earlier off, receipt or accrual, he would recognize the full 10,000 Rand on the earlier date. So when it was received, he would recognize the full 10,000 Rand in 2001, which is a problem for us as accountants, because now that creates a difference. It creates a temporary difference. Why does it create a temporary difference? Because he, he uh, recorded it this year, but next year, I will record it in my accounting profit. So over the two-year span, it does disappear. It goes away. But because we both would have done it over a two-year span. But in the, in the first year, in 2001, it is going to be a difference. So for accounting purposes, I would include nil, right? I would include none of the income. I would instead, I'll create a liability, right? So I say no. But the tax man, he says, oh, I want the whole 10,000. Uh, to be included in taxable profits. Okay, so you guys get that. Now, the next, let's go back to our definition. This is the last example. The next thing is, with regard to to um, to uh, gross income, we're not supposed to include anything with that is capital in nature, right? However, there is an inclusion. We can have an inclusion 
for something called capital gain. So what is a capital gain, guys? What is a capital gain? A capital gain is when we when the, the when we have something that has been inflated, some price has gone up. So you guys know what inflation is. Inflation is every year the price of goods go up, right? And the government then taxes us on that inflation. And it taxes us on that inflation and it's called, and that tax is called capital gains tax. Again, remember, it's not a separate tax to income tax. Instead, it's a tax that's included in income tax. So what we would do and what the inclusion rate is, is 80%. So that means 80% of any capital gain that is made is included in the income tax or in the taxable profits, okay, when we're calculating income tax. Okay, so I think let's look at an example and then maybe that will explain it a bit better. Okay, so let's look at this example. We say company B buys a stand Right, so stand we can uh, think of like uh, as a piece of land, right, or or, or a building. Uh, uh, buys a stand from company A for hundred thousand rand. Company B will use the stand in the normal course of business. Okay. Uh, company A's only business is to develop and sell these uh, pieces of land. Right, that's their only business is to develop and sell land. Um, so company B is buying it for for their business. Company A's business is to sell land, okay? So from company A's perspective, what, what is the land? Is the land PPE? Is it uh, investment property? Is it inventory? Is what, 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 what would it be from company A's perspective, right? There we go, it's inventory from company A's perspective, right? From company A's perspective, the land is inventory, but company B, what do you think company B? Because company B is buying it and he's buying it to use it for some production thing, right? So he, for him, it's PPE. Okay, great. Right, so now let's have a look at this. Right, so when something is PPE, it's considered capital. When something is inventory, it's considered normal business practice, right? So normal trading. Um, so now it says, so we're looking at A, right? So I'm reading, I'm reading here by A now. Okay, so it says company B immediately after acquisition sold the stand for 200,000, right? What will be included in the gross income of company B, right? So what we've in fact seen is that company B, uh, the proceeds on the sale was 200,000, but they bought it for 100,000. So they've made a capital gain, right? An inflationary gain of 100,000, makes sense, right? They've made an, a capital gain of 100,000. So let's go back to that uh, slide again with the criteria. So it says, if there's a capital gain, you must include 80% in taxable profits. So we're gonna say 100,000 times 80% is gonna give us 80,000, okay? So that's what we're saying here. We're saying, listen, it. It's supposed to be excluded for, for capital nature, but the special provision says that if it's a capital gain, we can include 80% in the taxable income or taxable profit. So therefore, we include 80,000 out of the gain okay, in, in um, taxable profits. Now, last question, okay? It says, what amounts will be included in gross income? of A limited. Now remember for A limited, it was inventory, right? It wasn't PPE. So for A limited, we would include the entire 100,000. Okay, why are we including the entire, entire 100,000? Because it's something that they, it's like revenue. It's, they, it's the normal profits that they gained, right? That's why we're including it. Okay, cool. Yeah, normal business activity. Now, I want to leave you with one more thought, right? So, so we, uh, just before you go, I just want you to think about this. So we, we spoke a little bit about, can you remember we spoke about dividend income and I said, would you, would you include it in accounting profit? Everyone said, yes, we'll include it. And I said, what would you do to that accounting profit to get to taxable profit? 
and then you said I would subtract the dividends income. Okay, everyone remember that, right? Now I want to talk about something else, right? So you know, as a company, you are not supposed to get a fine, right? Your your business is not to accrue fines. So when you get a fine, the government says to you, hey, listen, you got a fine or you got a penalty or whatever. Uh, maybe a, 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 you've been speeding on the road or whatever. Uh, you cannot deduct this as an expense. Okay. Now, from an accounting perspective, would you would you deduct it as an expense? You can tell me in the chat, yes or no. Would you deduct a fine from an accounting perspective? And everyone is is saying yes, right? We would deduct it. But from a a a tax uh, from a from a uh, taxable profit perspective, you're not supposed to deduct it, right? So what are you going to do for accounting profit, right? To make, to remove the effect of this fine. Are you going to add or are you going to subtract this expense? Can you see everyone is saying we're going to add it back. Now, this is the, this is the thing that, that some students don't understand. In order to transform the accounting profit into taxable profit, we must minus the exempt income, like dividends income, we must subtract the exempt income, but we must add the expenses that we can't deduct, like fines, for example. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Guys, so that is the end of the lecture today right i'll see you again tomorrow online and then we can do consulting after after that so so i just wanted to i'm just going to stop the recording now